When I first started playing this game, I had realized that the IJN ships were either Oni or Animal Girls, which I don't mind if you consider a few series on my channel. Given that I had a Tago when she was first around, I realized she was some kind of a dog girl, if not a wolf girl. However, with Takao, I could not see the indication where the ears were on her. A Tago made it so easy to spot, then there's Takao, where... <laughs> a Forkoma had to point it out to me. You know, I actually do kind of wonder how that looks for their sister ships, Maya and Choka. Oh, right. I'm still stuck at 7-3 trying to get freaking... Alright, for our first heavy cruisers, we'll be covering both Atago and Takao. As mentioned once before, I'll be covering some IJN ships together as a pair, but this and another duo were requested this way. Both Takao and Atago are build drop SRs with quite different personalities. So now how good is a teasing Onesan and her overly serious sister? Do they hold up to the SR rarity that they are, or will they just be like San Diego? Oh, god dang it. She's still getting in a video. Whatever, anyway, on to the review. Something that is pretty interesting is that Otago and Takao both appear to be copies of each other when it comes to their stat line. The only major differences, aside from their personality, is really their skills and weapon efficiencies. Otago has the advantage of being a bit more efficient with a main gun, whereas Takao is more efficient with torpedoes. I guess technically there is the difference of the luck stat that I've noticed on the wiki, in which Takao has a bit more luck than Otago but from what I've researched on it, it seems like luck really just affects accuracy and evasion, and even then, it's not gonna make a huge impression on it. As for heavy cruisers, things that I look for are their overall firepower, torpedo capability, if they have any, health, and armor type. Both of them have a pretty good firepower stat, and okay torpedo stats, which are both complemented by, I would say, an average reload for a heavy cruiser. Both also have a decent health pool and armor that really doesn't make them frail like several other ships that exist currently. Like all CAs, their evasion is pretty low, so they will have a higher chance to be hit, but thankfully they will always have a 10% chance to dodge, so I guess there's that. They both really have good stat lines, and honestly, if given good equips, they can put the work in. Just don't expect them to get the job done in 4 seconds. Outside of their stat line is where we see the two of them split up a bit. They both share one skill called Double Torpedo, which grants a 30% chance of launching two sets of torpedoes, with the second wave firing after a short delay after the first. This does help with their okay torpedo stat as it enables a bit more damage on that front. I guess one could use the Oxygen Torpedo equip to make them a bit more deadly, but honestly you might as well just use a destroyer like Ayanami or Shirinui for better torpedo damage. I myself personally like to stick with hit and evasion equips on my heavy cruisers. Every heavy cruiser suffers from really bad evasion, so evasion equips like SG Radar help to improve the chances of avoiding damage. Hit is also something I focus on as their damage is, well, key to in taking down high health enemies. Their second, well, okay, first skill is where they begin to defer a bit. Starting with the Tago, her first skill is Arsonist, which does a multitude of things. It increases the damage dealt with high explosive ammo by up to 15%, it increases burn damage by their same gun by 50%, and increases ignite chance by up to 12% as well. One huge thing to note about this skill is that it is a passive skill and will be active at all times during the fight. Also, make sure you're using a high explosive weapon on her. While the 203mm is ideal for her, using anything not high explosive makes her first skill pretty much pointless. With Takao, her first skill is Focused Assault, which allows her to deal double damage with her main gun. This is a pretty powerful skill in itself, but it is an RNG skill with a 30% chance to proc. It's not at all like Otago's passive. When you compare the two of them together, Takao has a better damage potential as her first skill can easily make up, if not surpass, the difference in efficiency with the main gun. If she were to not proc even once in battle though, then Natago would probably pass her up as she has better overall base damage that would give her that edge. The next big question comes down to whether or not they'd be better at a mob or a boss fleet vanguard. Personally, I haven't used heavy cruisers in boss fleets outside of hard mode requirements or simply just being very overleveled. The most I'll do with is light cruisers with smokescreen. I don't doubt that heavy cruisers can dish out some damage to the bosses, and I might give them more of a chance with boss fleets in the future. 
However, I'm always worried about their incredibly low evasion against bosses. Of course, I guess some good equips could make this less of a concern, so I guess it comes down to a preference. Anyway, I would say Takao would really shine well in a mob fleet vanguard as her skills would help significantly with DPS against the many enemies you encounter in those fleets. It would help using oxygen torpedo equips to make her torpedoes have a bit more presence in the battlefield, but like I said before, you could just use a destroyer. Takao can work well in boss fleets when her focused assault skill procs with her decent firepower, so again, I guess that really just comes down to whether or not it's a preference of yours. As for Otago, she's in the same boat, uh, no pun intended, as Takao. I would believe she would be a pretty good mob vanguard instead of a boss vanguard. Arsonist would allow her to do some considerably better base damage than Takao, but I've never really seen fire damage over time be a really big game changer. Both of them don't really synergize with anyone in particular as their skills really are only for them. I guess if you really like fire, you could have fun with Otago, Belfast, and Saratoga retrofitted, but only if you really feel like setting the whole world on fire. Or you play that one class in Team Fortress 2. Hmm. Unlike the backliners, Otago and Takao don't gain any advantages for being in the same fleet either. So while they may be offering you a bit more flexibility with your fleet building, you really won't get any major benefit out of both of them together. Just, I, I mean, honestly, you're going to have a much slower fleet than usual with the two of them. Overall, both have respectable stat lines to work with. Their skills are really what separate the two of them from each other. There are a few heavy cruisers that do beat them, but they are both still pretty good if you're lacking those better options. If I had to choose one over the other, I'd say Takao wins by her better damage potential. Keep in mind that it is a lot more RNG based than Otago's skill, so I guess Otago can still have, well, <laughs> yeah. And that will be my thoughts on Otago and Takao. Hope you all enjoyed this review, and once again, the list will continue to grow and shrink as time goes on. If there's a character that is not on the list and has not been covered, then feel free to comment below and I will add them to that list. Next up is the other duo that was requested, which is Furutaka and Kako. Once again, there is a Discord if you would like to join, link for that is in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or livestream that I do. Catch you guys all again later on.